Vicky Bazalgette and I'm going to tell you about a really important Londoner who was actually from Enfield, who transformed our lives as they are today. His name was Sir Joseph Bazalgette. So he wasn't my father, he wasn't my grandfather, but he was actually my great, great, great grandfather. So he lived a long time ago during the Victorian times, which I imagine is something you have all studied in history. Now he was born even before the Victorian times. He was born in 1819. Does anyone know when Queen Victoria started her reign? Her reign began in 1837. So Sir Joseph Bazalgette, who was born in 1819, that was a long time ago, wasn't it? It was over 100 years ago. It's nearly 200 years ago, if you think about it. Now, the name Bazalgette, as you might imagine, is not a name that originally comes from the UK. Does anyone know where that name might have come from? If I say it in an accent, will that help you? It's meant to be said, Bazalgette. So, as you might have guessed, this name is actually from France. Sir Joseph Bazalgette's family came over from France and they were a family of tailors. And Sir Joseph Bazalgette grew up in London and eventually became the chief engineer somewhere called the Metropolitan Board of Works. And they looked after all the water supplies and the water systems in London. Now, as you might know, back in the Victorian times, houses were not like they are today. They didn't have indoor toilets, they didn't have running water, and you would have found it pretty difficult living in Victorian London. One of the big problems with not having proper drainage and sewers in London was that there was a big problem with clean water. People were emptying their potties out of the window, they were getting water from pumps in the street, and the sewers were just not built to deal with those kinds of problems. They were too narrow, they weren't deep enough, sometimes they were open, so if you're walking along the street there would be terrible smells everywhere. And because more and more people were living in London every year, and moving here for work, the sewer system could just not cope. Now, by 1831, so just before Queen Victoria started her reign, there was a really big problem with child mortality. Does anyone know what that means? Child mortality means the rate of children dying. So by 1837, child mortality and when we talk about that, we mean children from babies up to the age of five was nearly 50%. So by 1831, just before Queen Victoria's reign had begun, cholera was already a very big problem in London because so many more people had moved here and the sewerage system was not sophisticated enough to deal with that level of population. So six and a half thousand people were dying of cholera roughly every year by 1831. Does anyone know what cholera is? Cholera is a waterborne disease which gives you a very bad tummy and a very high fever. And in the 19th century, in the Victorian times, there weren't any antibiotics to cure people of this disease. So in 1831, six and a half thousand people died of cholera. And by 1837, the child mortality rate, which means the number of children dying between when they were born and the age of five, was around 50%, which means that half of all babies and young children were dying before the age of five. Isn't that terrible? Could you imagine if it was like that in the, in the UK now? It would be absolutely horrible, wouldn't it? So it was recognised that we had a really big problem in London that we had to deal with in terms of the health of the public. What is an engineer and how did Sir Joseph Bazalgette help to solve this problem in London? As you might already know, an engineer is someone who uses mathematics and science to solve big problems that we have. An engineer is not someone who mends your boiler or mends your car. That is a different kind of job, but an engineer is someone who spends a lot of time studying and works very hard to sort out public problems, a civil engineer in fact. So by 1848, 
there was another huge cholera epidemic and this time tens of thousands of people were dying because the population of London had continued to expand and the members of parliament were worried and the doctors were worried and Sir Joseph Bazalgette and other engineers in London knew they had to do something to solve the problem. In 1858, the Great Stink happened, which I'm sure you can imagine by the name is not something particularly pleasant. The Great Stink refers to the time when the River Thames in London smelt so bad that anyone walking past the river wanted to be sick and had to hold their nose to block out the smell of the Thames. In fact, as some of you might know, the Houses of Parliament where the government sits is right next to the River Thames and it was so stinky there that the members of parliament, the MPs, were refusing to go into work because they couldn't concentrate. And because the MPs are the people who look after the money in this country, they decided that it was extremely important to solve this problem. The Thames stank, the water wasn't clean, lots of people were getting cholera and being sick and children weren't living very long. So they allocated £3 million to sort out this problem. And Sir Joseph Bazalgette was the engineer who had the task of doing it. Now £3 million is a lot of money today. But back in 1858, that was a huge amount of money, a bit more like having £3 billion to play with. So Sir Joseph Bazalgette started in earnest transforming the sewers of London. They dug deeper tunnels under the Thames, they dug a whole network of smaller tunnels and all these tunnels went from central London out to the sea to take all the sewage out of London away from where all the people were living. And they also built big pumping stations which as you can imagine by the name had the job of mechanically pumping all the sewage out of the sewage system and down the pipes towards the sea. Now this job as you can imagine was not a quick fix. It took Sir Joseph Bazalgette and his team more than 20 years to complete. However, by the late 1880s, this project was complete and the people of London were living in much cleaner circumstances. People weren't dying of cholera anymore, but in other European countries, they were still having huge problems with cholera, but in the UK, everything had been sorted and we were leading the way in terms of engineering in the rest of the world. Now I love this story because firstly a relative of mine was one of the key people who helped to change our city for the better and make it a safer place to live. So I'm pleased because he's my relative but also just very proud um, that we managed to sort out this problem in London and show the rest of Europe how to deal with public health effectively. I think it's an interesting thing to think about and it shows that someone with a good idea who studied hard can transform the lives of other people. So, in order to be an engineer, you have to enjoy science, enjoy mathematics and think hard about how you can use these subjects to solve problems. If people like Sir Joseph Bazalgette hadn't studied hard at school and gone to university to study engineering, then we wouldn't be able to solve these kind of problems in our country and we'd still be throwing, emptying our potties out of the window and drinking water from pumps in the street. So it's a good idea to think about these things and think about how you perhaps can make things different for us in the future and transform the way that we live.